Okay, welcome my YouTube minions. We are talking about factoring today and we're gonna make it easy. We are looking at quadratic trinomials. Trinomial just means it has three terms. That's where the tri comes in. Nomial just means term or name. So we've got three parts here. Quadratic is a second degree variable. So we, um, in the simplest form, have something that's like x squared plus 5x plus 4. But before we take that on, I want to just do a little bit of review about what it means to foil out or multiply two binomials. Because when we factor, we're trying to break it down into two binomials that multiply to make our quadratic trinomial. So consider something like this. Hopefully you've done this before and you can fast forward if this is simple for you. But to multiply these, I'm gonna do the first terms and multiplying those gives me 6x squared. Then I'm going to do the outside terms, that's the O in FOIL, and that gives me plus 14x. Then I do the inside terms, that's the I, and I get minus 3x, and then I do the last term there, and that's minus 7. I can combine these middle ones, and I will get then 6x squared plus 11x minus 7, and that is multiplying or foiling them out. Now what I'm doing with factoring is I'm doing the reverse process. I'm given this and I'm asked can I break it back down into what it was before it was foiled. There's only one unique solution. You never get more than one answer. If we have something like this we can just write our two parentheses like this and we can say alright the only way to get x squared is with x and x. The only way to make 4 is with 1 and 4, or 2 and 2. I don't need to reverse it and write 4 and 1 because these are identical. If they were different, I would have to reverse it. I then look at the plus sign here. If it's a plus, then both of these signs are the same. They're both going to be whatever this sign is, and in this case it's a plus. All right. Then I'm looking for the rainbow check, as you can call it, these two numbers. Um, that will multiply, that when I combine them will give me 5. If I use 2 and 2, 2x and 2x would give me 4x. That's not correct, so it's got to be the 1 and the 4. So my factoring then will be 1 and 4 right there. All right. Much more difficult one would be something like this, which we in the Boston area say is wicked had. If you get one that is in fact wicked had, you could try factoring it by guess and check method in which you'd have to list all of the ways to multiply to make 16. That would be 1 and 16, and then 16 and 1, and 8 and 2, or 2 and 8, and then finally 4 and 4. And if I reverse them, then I don't have to reverse these numbers. It's 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. Okay, so with the minus sign then, they're not both the same, as I said before. They're going to be different. They're going to be minus and plus, or plus and minus. So I've got actually 5 times 2, 10. And with these signs, there's sort of 20 different ways I could multiply these together to get a positive 16x squared, a minus 15, and then some number in here. And that would be all the different combinations. Now, I could spend a long time and do that, and I would eventually get it. But it's helpful to know sometimes a way that works every time that isn't just guess and check. And that's what I'm going to show you now. And we do that by drawing a kind of a box type thing like this. And divide it down the middle like that. And it's just a way of getting organized so you remember what to do. And this first term right here goes right there. And you write 16x squared. And this last term, with its sign, goes right there. That's minus 15. Then I just multiply these diagonally and write the product down here in the corner with that sign. So it's going to be a minus. And then if I do the multiplying, and you can maybe take a separate sheet of paper, you'll see it's 240 and then x squared. So I write that there. Whatever I write here, I write it also over here, minus 240x squared. And that's a little visual reminder that I'm looking for two things that multiply this way and will give me that same exact product. And each of these will have an x, and x and x will give me the x squared. But now I need two numbers that multiply to make 240, negative 240, 
and those two numbers then have a difference of 14. The two numbers will multiply to make negative 40 and add up to make negative 14, but I prefer to think of it as the difference between the, the multiples, the factors of 240, that will give you that 14. So you just start listing them. Um, it definitely is not going to be 1 and 240. It could potentially be 2 and 120 or 3 and 80, and you could keep going. Try 8, maybe, and 30 as we work our way up, but we're looking for numbers that have a difference of 14. Well, 8 and 30 have a difference of 22, so that's not there yet. These have a difference of 77. That's definitely not there. So going in this direction is the right direction. If I were to try 12 and 20, that would have a difference of only 8. In between this is, in fact, the one that works 10 and uh, then, uh, what is it, 24. Lost my place. 10 times 24 gives me 240, and that has a difference of the 14 that I want. Well, this is a negative sign. That will go with the larger of the two numbers so that they add up to be negative 14 and they multiply to make negative 240. I can write these numbers in either place. It'll work with either one, so it does not matter. Negative 24 and a positive 10. This will multiply and give me what I want. I basically cracked it at this point. All I do is I can just take this top row and I can rewrite that. 16x squared minus 24x. And then what I do is I just take out whatever is common to each of these things. They both have an x, so I can take out an x. They both have uh, a 2 and a 4, and even an 8 is the largest number I can take out. So if I take out that largest number, or think of it as dividing by 8x, that's another way to think of it. Then the x's cancel, the 24 cancels with the 8, and I get minus 3. The x squared cancels with the x, and I just get 1x. 16 over 8 is 2, and this is one of my two factors then. Oops, I'll slide that up. One of my two factors is 2x minus 3. My other factor then will be whatever it takes to make this work. So that'll be 8x, because 8x times 2x gives me my 16x squared. What times negative 3 gives me a negative 15? Well, that'll be a positive 5. And that then is the other factor. And I have finished it. You can quickly FOIL it and check, but you'll see it works out. If I do that, my first terms give me 16x squared, 10x, and negative 24x give me my minus 14x, and finally minus 15 when I do these last terms. And we're good to go. Good luck.